Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky is a Democrat who represents Illinois' 9th District, covering Chicago's north side, north shore suburbs. She attended the inauguration on Wednesday, joins me this morning to talk about the week that was and the road ahead. Congresswoman, good to see you again. A very different uh, sense in Washington than it was two weeks ago when you were there. There's no question. Last Thursday, the word in the uh, Congress was, what a difference a day makes. And I know personally, I feel much safer, I feel calmer, and I feel optimistic, which I realized I hadn't really felt for quite a while. So it's a, it's a wonderful time right now, and things are getting done. Donald Trump, as you've uh, not Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden has hit the ground running um, and doing things like sending a video. A friend of mine um, who works for the Park Service said they got a video this morning from Joe Biden thanking them for their public service. And she was so, so moved by that. Just nice. It's, a, it's certainly a different tone. Let me ask you, uh, you know, Donald Trump was known for, you know, executive orders. And yet, when you look back at his record in this early part of his term, the first day, he only signed one. As I said, President Biden, he's at 30 and counting. Is this a smart and effective way to govern through executive order? Because, you know, you get a new president one day and all of those can get reversed. Well, no, this is not, this is just the beginning to say that, for example, we're not going to have a ban on, on Muslims, and that is so important. We're going to take care of the dreamers, the young people who came to this country, um, and make sure that they can have a path to citizenship. We're going to end the, uh, we're going to continue, actually, the moratorium on evictions, which is so important to so many people right now, and foreclosures, and put a, a pause on the payment of student loans, which is going to affect a lot of our young people. So um, that we can get these things done right away by the President of the United States, instead of the, instead of the kind of name calling and um, you know, building of walls, and which is also an executive order. No more building of a wall. Yeah, that, that's been stopped. Um, the president's agenda, clearly, COVID-19, immigration, the global environment. Um, what are your thoughts about the priorities? Does he have the priorities correct for the nation? Well, and there's a lot of topics that are being covered right now, but I think each and every one of them means a lot to a lot of people. The fact that we've rejoined the world. Um, I've been um, doing some uh, foreign press, uh, particularly the BBC and Canada, and really those countries are so happy that they're going to have a sensible leader, someone who can really, um, you know, think about other people and other countries and be allies that are reliable. And so um, I, I think that he's just right on. Do you think there's any concern about the relationship between President Biden and relations? For example, um, he, I think on Friday, talked to uh, Prime Minister uh, Pierre, uh, sorry, uh, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, uh, Pierre was his father, uh, of Canada. And, you know, Trudeau is not happy about the ending of the Keystone Pipeline. Other parts of Canada aren't as well. So he's doing some things that his supporters in the U.S. Want, will, wants. Will that create problems abroad? You know, I think by and large, if there is an honest broker, someone who will sit down at the table and talk to them about mutual in interests or maybe not so mutual interests. The erratic behavior uh, of Donald Trump, you never knew what he was going to do. You never knew even w was he going to bomb Iran. I mean, he was so um, unreliable that I think that regardless of some of the different disagreements that the rest of the world uh, the rest of the Democratic world, for sure, is welcoming Joe Biden to the stage now. Let's talk a little bit about the dynamics within the House. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, press recently. We know that several Republican members on that terrible day a couple of weeks ago uh, were not wearing masks. And, of course, several Democratic members, including your colleague, Brad Schneider, uh, then uh, contracted COVID-19 as a result. We know that they've got metal detectors up before you can get on the House floor. And some uh, of the members, uh, I have guns on them, and they're not being allowed in confrontations. What is going on? Is, is this something that Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, can properly and adequately address? Well, we have to have that addressed because, you know, Congressman Harris tried to get on the House floor with a, with a gun. Um, apparently, they can keep them in their offices. I think we have to have a serious discussion 
uh, about that. And one of the executive orders did deal with having to wear masks. Um, we're going to try that for a while to convince everyone because that's how we really lower the curve here when it comes to the coronavirus. So um, we have to insist on certain rules. We have to keep the House of Representatives safe, and we want to keep all Americans safe. You know, in the How world of, I'm uh, sorry, ahead. in the world of impeachment, and, and you know, there's there's some Republicans who think Democrats should drop it because we should move on and, and and unite. In the House, you've got the issue of having to address some of the House members who, at least, there may be some indication they were involved in some way with what happened in, on that day of insurrection. Should the House proceed? Should they investigate? Should they expel members, depending on what is found? There is no question that we need a full investigation. Were there members, as it seems there might have been, that took people on a tour to show them where certain places were in the, uh, in the Capitol? I absolutely think that we have to have some rules that we can trust that we're um, not endangering one another with behaviors that are completely unacceptable. We need an investigation. On the, I'd be remiss if I didn't notice your dog has a very cute tail. It's showing up from time to time. I love that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm right behind you. Um, on the impeachment front, um, the, the Republicans, of course, in the Senate, uh, you know, seemed a bit surprised when Chuck Schumer announced on, uh, on Thursday that those uh, articles would be coming over on Monday. Um, are they moving too quick? Will they not be able to address the rest of their agenda? Well, first of all, the um, Senate may decide not to um, immediately. They will take up um, the impeachment because Chuck Schumer believes that no man is above the law, no person is, and that each president has to be held accountable. So there will be um, a, a trial in the, in the Senate. But we absolutely can schedule it in a way, they can schedule it in a way that they continue with legislation, um, perhaps on, in the in the morning, and that they do some work on the um, impeachment on the in the afternoon. So I think we and, and this is not going to be a complicated trial. Everyone saw it. This was in plain sight, and so I don't think that it's going to take all that long to have a really compelling um, trial. And I am hopeful conviction. Also, let me ask you, the, the president signing executive orders about minimum wage, trying to raise that, about increasing food stamps and, so, and helping those uh, who are uh, in, in food need right now. Republicans are talking about debt and, and, and the rising debt. I, was that something you've heard over the last few years, or is that a concern that seemed to erupt on, like, around January 20th? Well, it was radio silence when it came to giving about a $2 trillion tax cut going to the top 1% mostly. No problem about the, uh, the, the deficit. This was unpaid for. Now, when we're trying to deal with the fact that about one out of four Americans, and many are children, are food insecure, meaning they don't know where the next meal is going to come from, who are we? And we have a new definition of who we are under Joe Biden, a compassionate people that knows we have to take care of each other. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky of Illinois' 9th District, thank you for your time this Sunday morning. Have a great rest of your weekend. You've got quite the agenda ahead of you back in Washington. I appreciate your time. Be great.